Hey, so we've written a few objects ourselves um, and now what we're going to do is we're going to actually deal with an object that somebody else created and just by being given the object code, see if we can figure out how we would use it ourselves in our own program. So in front of me here, I've got a worksheet that my class uses and on the right hand page, there is the definition for an object called house area. And if I read the first question, um, it gives me a bit of a hint what the uh, what the object would be used for. So the first task in this worksheet would be to draw the GUI, so graphical user interface, for a program that allows you to enter in the length and width of each of the rooms of your house to calculate the total area of your house and then display how much it would cost you to carpet the house. So for any extra informa information we should actually look at the code. So Let's copy that and paste it into a new class in Eclipse. Now when you're copying and pasting from Word, you do have to be really careful because some of the formatting of the characters is different. Um, now in the task sheet, house area was the name of the object. Okay, so here with the formatting, I need to use lowercase if and lowercase else. Cannot convert from double to int. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll cast the result of that calculation to an int at the end. We've gotten rid of that error. Okay, so the idea is first of all you can copy and paste it, then what you want to do is just tidy it up, make it more readable, and get rid of any errors that have occurred. Okay. So I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit picky with my formatting. So I'm just making it a little bit tidier for myself there. Okay. Now the first thing that I might do is have a little bit of a look at how this code appears to function. So when you first create a house area object, it sets the total area to zero, and that's used for the total area of the house. The room area I guess is the total area for a particular room. The length and width is for also for a particular room, so I'll copy that. Is the length of the so it's kind of handy if the code's not already commented to actually go through and comment it for yourself um, just to uh, give you a better understanding of the code that you're working with. Now the price, is it the price for a room or is it the price for the whole house? So let's look for somewhere that deals with price. We've got a method here called calculate price and it appears to work with the total area of the house. So, so price for carpeting the whole house, we'll put on that one. The constructor, let's just fix up my spelling mistakes. The constructor sets everything to zero to start with. Then we've got this method that says add room area and it takes a length and a width. It calculates the area for a particular room and then it appears to add that onto a running total for the total area. So this calculates the area for a room and adds the area to total area for house. Okay, so that's its job. The price, calculate price, calculates the price of carpeting the total area of the house. Get total area just returns the total area of the house. Get price returns the price for carpeting the house. And cancel all just appears to reset to initial values. 
Now I will say I have seen this code before but I've never actually worked with it. So you're in the same boat as me here. We are using a piece of code that we've not previously used. Now looking back at that worksheet, now that we've got a little bit of an idea what the code does, the first question said to draw the GUI for the program that allows you to enter in the length and the width of each of the rooms of your house to calculate blah 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 blah. So let's actually create a new class that will allow us to make this GUI. So let's call it house area underscore interface or you can call it whatever you like. So I'm just going to set it up like a basic program first. Okay, so I'm ready to go. I've got a basic interface here so far with nothing in it. I've added action performed with the action listener there because I know that this is going to have buttons. Okay, so it said that the user needed to enter in the length and the width, so we're going to need at least two text fields. So I'm going to call them length field and width field. I'm going to need a button that adds the room area. I'm going to need another button that will calculate the total price and another button that will cancel everything. So I'm going to have three buttons. Um, so I'll just go through the steps for making those buttons. You've done buttons and text fields before, so just make sure you follow the steps. Um, I might actually add some labels as well to indicate what they need to enter. Okay, so I've declared and instantiated all of my form components so I can run it now and hopefully it will look roughly like the GUI that we want. It's gonna not going to look that pretty because I haven't actually specified the placement of anything. That width seems to work, so let's see if we can set the size. In a way that will make it look good each time we run it, not wide enough. So that will work. Okay, so what we've got is our graphical user interface. Um, and currently we don't have any functionality in that. Let's look back at that worksheet. Draw the GUI for the program that allows you to do stuff. Okay, we've done that. We haven't drawn it, but we have created it in our Eclipse. The next thing is to create an object of that type. So what we need to do for that is we need to follow all the rules that we've had before. So when you're going to create something of a particular type, you first of all declare the type. So we're going to have house area, so that's our object. It's a house area object. And we're going to call it cat's house. Okay, so we've declared an object of that type. Looking back at our worksheet, we have Oh, sorry, we haven't actually instantiated that, so we might want to do that as well. That would be a smart thing to do. So we're going to call the constructor method by saying cat's house equals new, and then again we just refer to that object. Now, when we call the constructor method, sometimes there needs to be something in those brackets, and if we're not sure whether there does need to be something in there or not, we go back to our, our object. There is nothing in the object definition, so we leave that one blank. Okay, in the worksheet it says something about um, adding the room area of 5 by 3 and then also 8 by 7. What we might do instead of 
hard coding it with those exact values, we might actually use those text fields that we created. So what we need to do is, if we're going to enter in a length and a width, we need to be able to use those. Um, and we're not going to respond, we need to respond to each button differently. So in Action Perform, the first thing we might do is set up a series of if statements to check which button is being pressed. So if e.getSource is add room button, we're going to do, we're going to have a particular response. If the button that was pressed was the calculate button, we'll have a different response. And obviously if the reset button was pressed, we're going to have a different response again. And no matter what our response, we are then going to repaint the screen. Okay, so we want to be able to use the add room button to get the two values from the user, the length and the width, and we want to be able to call this add room area method to add the room area to the total. So what we need to do is we need to get the information out of the text field. So we could have little variables, so int len equals uh, length field dot get text. Obviously that's going to get the text as a string, so we need to parse it to an integer. Ooh, hang on. So integer dot parse int. Now I've made this a little local variable because I only need it I only need that value long enough to call the method, so I'm going to make it local so that, you know, I don't need to use it everywhere else. I don't need to keep track of it everywhere else. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say cat's house, and to access a method within the house area object, we use the dot, and it will actually pull up a list of things, and we're going to use the add room area, and we're going to pass up those little local variables we created, calls len and width, and then that, in theory, will do the job for us. We're not going to be able to see anything that way, so my, maybe we'll just put in a drawstring, and we'll use cat's house, and let's actually get the total area so we can see the running total as we go along. So get total area, and let's print it at 20, 250, which is hopefully under everything else. It doesn't like that because it's returning a number, so we'll put a the string in before it and say area or maybe total area okay so if I run this one now we should be able to so 2 and 5 so the area of 2 and 5 2 times 5 is 10 we're not getting our draw string oh we are it's way down there so we might move it up a little bit I go 150. Okay, so 2 and 5. Add room area is 10. Um, add another 3 by 4, so that's 12. Add it onto the 10 should be 22. Okay, so it's working as we expect. Looking back at our worksheet, we haven't done this the way it's been asked, but we are using it in a more effective way, the way it was originally designed. Uh, it said, show the code to calculate and then display the cost of carpeting these rooms. So we want to now make use of that calculate method. So calculate price. And when they press the calculate button, we want to call cat's house, oops, sorry, cat's house dot and we can find our method calculate price and we're going to need a variable to put that one in because it's going to return if we have a look uh, oh no sorry it's actually just doing the calculating for us it's not actually returning a value so it's calculating which is fine what we'll do is we'll copy that drawstring and to actually get the price we then need to use another method so we'll have a look here what will give us the price get price so we can use cat's house dot get price 
and put that just below the area. So all we're doing is looking at what we need to do and finding the right method that will do that for us. So we'll go 3 and 4, add room is 12, then we had 5 and 2, we said that was 22, and we're going to hit calculate. So apparently it's going to cost $550. I might be nice here and actually put a dollar sign in there for you. Now 550, let's have a look here. So obviously it's $25 per meter, per square meter, uh, but if I was carpeting for over 100 meters, I would get what appears to be some kind of discount. I'm a little bit curious about why it's timesing it by 250 and then timesing by 80.85. I think that's just supposed to be 25. Okay, so we have a functioning applet except for this little guy. Reset. Let's use, okay, first of all, let's have a look at our, our object and cancel all is what allows everything to be reset. So let's go into our reset button and say cat's house dot cancel all semicolon and let's run that. Let's add some numbers. Calculate, reset all, and we're good. Now one thing I would probably add in here to be a nice person is it's kind of frustrating to enter information in and then have to delete it to do the next one. So to clear the fields after you've got the information out of them, so you must get the information first, what we do then is we refer to the field that we want to change and we say set text and then we just put in a dummy string with nothing in it. Oops, dot set text. And so that's just a little bit more user friendly. It should clear the fields as soon as we've put the data in there. So four and three, oops. Add the room. And calculate the price. Okay, so that is where I have looked at an object that I've been given and worked my way through it. I started by commenting everything to just sort of figure out what everything's job was and then I created the interface to go with it based on the information I was told and then I created the house object, house area object declared it and instantiated it and to do that I had to look back at the constructor method and see what information it required and then from there I started using the interface I designed and calls to the methods um, like add room area, calculate price, calculate all and then also some of the get methods to get that information back out. So if you have an object that you are unfamiliar with have a bit of a read of it and see what you think it does, go through and comment it and then start trying to use it. It's usually not too hard, obviously it depends on the complexity of the object that you're given.